Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint this landscape in oil pastels. And I took a reference photo at the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens last weekend, and I thought it was so beautiful that I wanted to paint it. Unfortunately, I couldn't paint it live on location because I found this little area about an hour before the place was going to close and I still had a hike back to my vehicle. So uh, next best thing, take a photo and uh, do it at home. If you would like a real-time version of this lesson, you can find it up now in Critique. Critique Club over in my Teachable School. I will have a link in the video description. Critique Club is a membership group. It's $5 a month and you get access to over 100 real-time, more advanced tutorials than what I post on YouTube, as well as uh, feedback from me. You can post your art and get some feedback from me, your original artwork or artwork done from the lessons that are included in the membership. So if you're curious about that, you can learn more below. I'm starting off by putting in the sky and the water and I'm using a variety of colors from kind of like a grayed tealish blue to a periwinkle blue to a kind of an aqua color I'm trying to get the beautiful tones that I see in this landscape and the oil pastels I'm using are the Paul Rubens Haya brand they are the latest oil pastel offering from Paul Rubens they offer them in uh, sets of 48 36 and 72 for the standard size sticks and then they offer a jumbo stick in black and white so if that's something that you've been interested in go check them out um, it's kind of nice to have that 72 set I originally tried their set of 48 and um, and I thought that was really really wonderful or 24 was it 24 or 48 I think it was 24 maybe I'm not sure but anyways now they have 72 and they're very similar to the Sennelier oil pastels they blend really well they're lipstick soft so they can be a bit um a bit greasy if you're not using a really textured paper and I'm using the sanded 400 grit U art paper which is working really well with these but even towards the end I did start to fill in the tooth a bit and struggled with getting those darker darks on there so my recommendation with this particular product is actually to use them as your final layers. So I would have a harder pastel to use as your bottom layer, maybe the original Paul Rubens or um, kind of like any standard oil pastel that's like not so greasy. And then I would use this for your final layers because this will stick on top of the harder pastels. But once you get this down, it's very hard for things to stick on top because it is so creamy and lipstick-like. So just a kind of a um, just kind of a heads up for you. They are very pigmented and opaque, and I'm really pleased, even with the greens, because sometimes your greens in oil pastels get a little. Um, oh, the, you know, they just get kind of gummy and translucent and they don't want to grab. I didn't have that issue with the greens in this set there. And there are a lot of greens, which is nice. But um, if that's something you're interested in, I will link that down below as well. And you can check it out. And I think they have some specials running because this is a brand new product. And if I get any special discount codes to share, I will share those below. Uh, the Paul Rubens company did send these to me to try out. And um I just want to let you know in case uh, you want to let that um, inform your your opinion of them at all. But uh, I think they're running about 46 bucks for the 72 colors. And there was a coupon code last I checked, but there might even be a better discount now. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to look in the video description <laughs> to see if I got a better deal for you. Sometimes they'll give me a special deal to share. So I'm using a variety of grays. I'm also using black to get my darkest colors in there. I know I have that, those jumbo sticks of black that I can use as well. So I'm like, I'm not gonna be stingy with the black. Um, also, I wanna get those strong shadows in early because sometimes going in later with the darks can be very uh, troublesome with oil pastels and with oil paints even because you're always mixing with those lighter colors so if you know you're going to need those super super dark values go ahead and put them right in with the black as your first layer that way if you ever have to scrape down to them that's what's going to be on the bottom staining the paper so you'll be so if you scrape down like say you layer up some lighter colors and you scrape back you're going to be getting that black color just like if you've got light colors down as your first layer and then you scrape back you're going to get those lighter colors because that's a color that's going to stain the paper um it's kind of it, it's it doesn't probably make much sense until you actually do it just like with anything um i liken it to being being a beginner of anything you don't really know what you're what you're doing it's like you can watch videos all about it but until you actually do it, you don't really understand or, or put it into practice. It's like I've been learning how to play volleyball and I watched some videos before I went to my first uh, volleyball game to play and uh, just a rec volleyball game. And I watched the videos. I knew 
theoretically what to do, but it wasn't until I was in the game that anything clicked. So um, there's one thing to know how to do something theoretically. It's a totally other, another thing to do it and actually see how it goes down. So, um, so, you know, use those products, use your supplies. That's the only way you're going to learn. Don't wait until I need to know everything before I do it because I don't want to waste it. You're not going to learn it until you've actually do it. Now, one indispensable tool, I think, for oil pastels, especially if you're a landscape painter, is to have a palette knife, especially these small ones. And this came in a set of palette knives. And palette knives, um, you can get them really, really inexpensively online. Um... I have some expensive palette knives and some cheap ones. I generally don't notice that much of a difference. I have snapped some palette knives, which would be the cheapest of the cheap, but you know, uh, I don't know. It's really hard to say without picking them up, but for something like use like this, I really don't think you're going to break them. It seems like whenever I've broken a palette knife, I've been using them incorrectly, like using them to pry something out of something else when it's like, yeah, that's not how you should be using your palette knives. Uh, you could also use a cut up piece of credit card to scrape the um, oil pastels around, but it's such a wonderful way to get some texture to do like tree bark or pebbles or like the faces of rocks. Um, you really, really give it a try if you've never used it. Oil pastels, there's a bunch of different techniques you can do with oil pastels. I did a video a couple months ago of like my top, I think it was like my top 12 oil pastel techniques, or maybe it was even more. I don't know, but I put my, my favorite techniques in there. So if you've never used it before, it just gives you a lot of different options on how you can use your oil pastels. It doesn't have to be this brand. It can be any brand, um, but I'll link that video down below so you can check that out if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, so here you can see I am trying to put these uh, foreground trees and it's kind of giving you a really pretty, almost lacy screened effect. And I love that that effect. I love it when you, you call it like a, um, a gobo if you were doing filmmaking. That's a term I actually learned in college, but it's really good in art too. It's like when you have this thing in your foreground and it's like uh, framing the scene and it's adding this detail. It's like almost like a lace curtain that you're putting down. And I love that effect, but I was struggling having the black... Uh, oil pastel stand out against the sky and whenever I'd scrape back I would just get sky color so I did struggle with that a bit um, if I had been using black paper I might have been able to scrape back to the black paper but I was using just that cream colored UR at sanded paper and by the way if you want something cheap to practice with I don't know how cheap it is but it'd be cheaper you could just use sandpaper from the hardware store it wouldn't be acid free um it would be, you know, whatever sandpaper is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what sandpaper is made of. It's like, I don't know. I have no clue. Sand uh, on paper. I don't know what the surface is like, but I mean, know what the surface, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's going to like crumble apart in five years or what, but you could definitely practice um, on that because the UART paper is pricey. I do like it a lot. Some artists have speculated whether the UART paper is actually archival. It says that it is. Um, I don't know. I like it. My only problem with the UR paper is that if I don't tape it down and once I untape it is that it wants to curl. So that's kind of a bummer. But, you know, if you mat it and frame it, it's going to be flat. But it's just kind of, um, it just kind of is a pain. The other thing I like about the UR paper is that it comes with the glassine. So you don't have to go find extra glassine to wrap your work in. Because what I do when my painting is done is I wrap it in glassine and I store it in a big portfolio until I'm ready to frame it. So um, I like that it comes with the glassine. I don't have to hunt that down or buy it separately. So, I mean, that's part of what you pay for, I guess. But it is not cheap. And, um, you know, you could always wait for a sale. See if you, and when you do find it on sale, grab it. I also like pastel matte, but for whatever reason, I think I just like the grit of the sanded paper a little bit more. The UR pastel matte is more smooth. This is sandpaper like, and, um, and it just, it works really well for me. I like it. You can use whatever you like. I also like the um, Canson XL sand grain mixed media paper. It's a pebbly surface. It's not sandpaper, but it's uh, it's an it's incredible value. It's only like about it's under ten bucks for forty sheets of it over at Blick, and it works really well for oil pastels. Now it's not going to hold as much media as this being sanded, so you'd have to go with a little bit lighter of a touch. But uh, it's just it's a wonderful paper, and if you you don't have it in the budget for pastel mat or the UR paper, it's definitely my my third best favorite paper for oil pastels, and um, so much cheaper. 
if I know I'm going to need to put a lot of layers on it, or if I know I'm working with like with this, I just wanted to use these new pastels, these new Haya pastels. And I just knew if I didn't have a harder pastel and I just used the, the, um, these lipsticky like pastels that it would be too, I would have filled up the tooth way too quick. So that's why I, that's why I did this. Now I let it sit overnight and I came back to it and I'm like, you know, I just wish I could get a little bit darker in some of the areas. Um, actually at this point, I'm still, I'm still working on, on it, uh, on day one. I'm going in with, um, uh, with a palette knife, picking up some color, just kind of applying the thick foliage in the foreground with a palette knife and with some pastels, just trying to get it to stick. One thing I've noticed that is that if you're having trouble getting your layers to stick, one thing you can do is just leave it be for a couple hours, let that pastel kind of dry out. A bit and then it will be easier to layer some more on top. Also of course using a palette knife to actually scoop some pastel off the stick and lay it down does help because then you can kind of almost like um, paste it on there like you're icing a cake. That works out really well. Um, you can also put down a big smear of the pastel and then scrape into it. The scraffito effect that does that's good for like grasses like I did right in front of that rock. Um, but I did find that I was having a hard time getting the darker values that I wanted, especially in the tree branches that are kind of uh, framing the scene. And I was debating whether or not I wanted to add um, an oil-based paint pen to it. So I did let it sit overnight before I did that. And we'll get to that clip in a moment. But um, at this point, I'm still just trying to get enough pastel down to get the um the values that I'm after and I feel like I'm kind of overworking it here to be honest um sometimes you get these little glimmers of moment in your work where you're like oh yeah I like it this is great and then you kind of go another step and you've overworked it a bit and it's kind of frustrating but um I find the best thing to do when you're feeling like feeling that is just to take a break now here I'm putting in some black pastel with the palette knife and that is helping that is giving me some of those darker values that I want um, you can see in the reference photo, there's just these kind of like chunks of shadow in the tree trunks and these, these dappled shadows on the ground that I'm trying to get. And the palette knife is working really well for that. And actually I do go in and like I mentioned, I do go in and try some paint pen on there, but I have to say that I think I like it without the paint pen better. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the clip in there. I'll let you see it. And then you can decide for yourself what you think is best, but, um, I really think that the, the pastel on its own was a little bit better. And I definitely think this technique of using the palette knife to scoop some palette, some uh, pastel off the stick and add it in is good. So I'm taking the tape off because I want to see how it looks with a nice fresh border because that always gives you kind of a new perspective at it. And then I left it overnight. I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and see it tomorrow, see if I want to try the oil paint pens. Actually, I took photos of everything first. Because if I mess this up, then I could have something. <laughs> I could have something to show as a finished product. But um, but then after t I took the photos, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try this with the paint pens. Now the paint pens did help me carve out a little bit more of that darker value and that detail. Um, and I think that was effective. The paint pens are fairly matte, so I don't feel like it's going to give me shiny spots on the painting. And you can like use your finger or a palette knife or whatever and actually mix that paint pen into the pastel if you want to. But um, there, you do run a risk by doing this of some cracking because the paint pen's gonna dry. The oil pastel is never gonna dry. So there could be a little bit of cracking issue. Um, I didn't end up using too much of it because I kept clogging the pen with the, the oil pastel and I had to keep scribbling it off. So it was kind of frustrating. And I just, um, I just kind of just added a little bit of highlights in the greens and some shadows in the the branches and the like pine needle area and all the rocks and honestly I kind of called it a day because I got a big blob of white paint you can kind of see that on that rock and then I had to kind of disperse it and I'm kind of trying to move it around with a palette knife and I'm like oh no what am I doing what is this I should have quit the night before but um you know when you make a mistake you just push through and then you have a little more information on how you could fix something in the future and that's what i did here and this is pretty much how i left it i hope you found this interesting and i hope it makes you want to try your oil pastels i'll put everything i talked about in the video description including a link to critique club if you would like to join me over there thanks for watching until next time happy grafting bye